Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, he's stealing from you. He's not letting you chew on anything. Why? He's a party pooper, isn't he? Why is he pooping on your party? Hey guys, welcome to the shop. I've got a continuation of a video that we've done just, just here recently where I've been working on a big ball mill. I guess big ball mill. Um, what I need to do is finish that project up. So in a previous video, we drilled some holes in some large flanges. We took bearing carriers off and end pieces. But in this video, I have to work on the bearing carriers themselves. I'll show you what's wrong with them. Big bronze bushings like I got here on the bench. They need a little bit of service work. So thanks for watching and uh, let's get started. So I've got two of these big bronze bushing holders, bearing carriers, whatever you want to call it. And one of them is worse than the other, but both of them suffer from the same issue. And that is the bearing itself is not fastened to the housing. And both of these bronze bushings have twisted in their housing. And this one has twisted so much that it can no longer be greased through the grease hole that was drilled in this thing. Now, I don't know who made these. You can see they're kind of crudely, crudely fashioned all torch work and just buzz together the problem is that you know this needs to be attached to this housing the bearing needs to be pressed out it needs to be recentered pressed in and attached in some way either keyed there's lots of ways pinned this bearing needs to be attached to this housing so it can no longer twist and it can be greasable so you can see this face here is a thrust face you can see how it continues the grease reliefs continue out to the edge so this rides on a, on a face and the, on this internal takes the majority of the load so this bearing has to be pressed out this way and this kind of complicated i guess because of the way that these are designed or, or lack of design um, so let's discuss how we're going to get this apart get these set up or get them pressed apart and pressed back together and uh, get get moving that'll work so now we need to figure out yeah, turn it off. Now we need to figure out how we're going to hold these in the press and get those big bronze bushings pressed all the way out of these housings. So due to the way that these are designed, it's going to kind of be hard to press these bushings out. You can see the, the thrust side here. There's just nowhere, I mean, a little edge, maybe a 80 thousandths of an inch or so, um, you know, a couple millimeters. There's not much to grab onto to press this big bushing out. So here's the plan. Um, what I think that I'm going to do, cut this in half and you weld a couple ears onto the face of this housing. Now these can be cut off uh, in the end. They're going to be sacrificial, but I have to have something to set this thing down into the press to press upon because I, there's just nothing here, to, nothing here to press with. So yeah, we need to cut, we need to cut those in half. We can use the plasma and just go <laughs> so these are all they are is press ears and these will be cut off as soon as the job is as soon as the job's done okay. watch eyes yep Hold itself. Thank you. So I'm only putting enough weld on this to hold it because yeah. it has to be cut back off. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Hopefully it'll hold. If it doesn't, you know, just stop and re weld it. 
now we want to get this one about the same stick out you know what i mean that way Ooh, that's hot is that this <laughs> no this is <laughs> the one that i just welded on you think that's fine where it is or that looks pretty good to me okay guys yep Hopefully that'll be enough. Let's set it on the table here. Just anywhere on there for now. We gotta figure up a way to get this thing rigged up so we can press on it. Yeah. So, yeah, now this needs, these ears need to sit on that and that needs to sit on that. We'll have to, just to get this square, we'll have to stack something under this so yeah. we're pressing straight. And we need to get this center of the press. All the way into the middle? Yeah, just touch it. That's good enough. All right, so you want to just see what it feels like. Go ahead. Okay. Oh. Yeah, it's it it's moving. You wanna keep doing it? Yep. Oh yeah, it's working. And it's not it's not taking a lot, is no. you're not having it. No. Working better than I thought. <laughs> I think it was harder at first. That seems like it's yeah. not as not yeah, it's, 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 you don't have to pull as hard now. Let me feel. Yeah. Really I mean hard. it's a snug fit, but it's not it's not crammed in there. Oh well, it's got a channel all the way around it. Huh, that's neat. So it uh, when you grease it, that grease travels all the way around the bearing and there's holes all the way around it so it gets it greases the whole thing that's pretty cool as long as that's lined up with that grease hole properly <laughs> exciting uh, I didn't think it was gonna come out that easy I didn't know there we go bud we did it one down one to go Pressing them in shouldn't be near near as bad. We just got to make sure that they're properly lined up, and we got to clean up these houses and that bearing as well. It's a big old bushing in it. It's a lot <laughs> of bronze. Ugh. Oh, lay your lay your eyes on Lulu. Well, we was tired. Oh, yeah. She's sweeping in her little bed, can <laughs> Look at it. Oh, gosh. She's got her nest. Oh, oh look. It's all, like, puffed up around. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she custom made oh. it. Yeah.
So me and my son got these pressed apart. We got them cleaned up. Everything's looking pretty good. Now, the original reason why I was asked to take these apart and check them out is because, for one, the bearings weren't connected, or we didn't believe that the bearings were connected to the housing, and they were twisting in there, and that the grease hole in the top of the carrier here was not lined up with the grease hole that's in the bushing. Well, come to find out, now that we got this thing pressed apart, it wasn't obvious uh, when it was together, that there's a channel all the way around this thing. So as long as this channel lines up under this hole, which it does, because it just measured it, it doesn't matter which way this bearing is clocked in here. So grease comes in the top, this is pressed in the housing, grease follows around this channel, and you can see around this, there is four holes that line up with the relief cuts or the grease uh, channel in these. Grease comes in, goes around the channel, out the holes, it travels down the slots. It doesn't travel out this way because it's not cut completely out this way. It travels through the channel to the thrust face of this bearing and does its job. At least in theory, that's, that's the way it's supposed to work. So it really does not matter which way this bearing is clocked in this housing as long as this channel is underneath this hole, which it is. But what I'm going to do is press this thing back together, just get it squared up to where it looks good. You know, make sure that it greases the way that it's supposed to once it's together. I will fasten this bearing to the housing. That way, it just ensures that the bearing stays put in the in the in the support and doesn't you know, lock up on the actual ball mill uh, piping and you know cause problems. So I am still doing this exactly what I was told to do. You know, it just we did not know that this had a slot around it, which changes you know whether this needs to be clocked or not. So what we got. Is this a grandbaby? Huh? Who is this little girl? Delilah. What's Delilah? Delilah the grandbaby. Look at her. She's a cutie. So I have got a quick tool tip for you. Every time I show these expanding transfer punches on my on my channel, I get a ton of interest in them. I'll get four or five emails, where does guy get a set of those? Never seen them before. This three-piece set pretty much takes the place of this entire set of fixed size transfer punches. And these will do sizes more accurately between sizes than what you can get with your fixed size. So if you're interested, KBC Tools right now has these on sale. Not this exact brand, but a three-piece set exactly like this for 31 bucks, which I thought was a really good deal. Now, um, if you don't know what a transfer punch is, you probably won't be interested in these, but if you are, and I know that these always, you know, get people riled up when they see them, and you want to get you a set, that's, I just found them. KBCTools.com, part number right there. 31 bucks. I thought that was a great deal personally. And uh, there you go. Get you a set of these transfer punches. Get some in your toolbox. They actually fit in the housing pretty decent. Mm -hmm. I mean, better than I thought that they would. Yeah. But they still, as heavy as that ball mill is, these I think still need attached. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like mechanically attached to the carrier. Hello, Lulu. Oh, give me that toy. Oh, give it to me. Oh, it's frozen it's solid. solid. It's frozen. I can lift it. Yeah. Okay. So where are you going to set it up? Um, uh, dang it. Let's just sit on the bench here. You got it? Yeah. Let's give me a good way. Go away. Sit all the way to the back. Just center it up there. 
perfect. I need to vacuum out this because it's got a lot of mouse turds in it. Do you, what do you want to, do you not gonna put the, where are you gonna put this then? Um, I don't know yet. I want to find a place to put it. So me and my son, we got these bearings pressed out. We cleaned them up and inspected them. And then we pressed them back in. That was what I was asked to do. And I was also asked to secure these bearings to the, these bushings to the housing. So let me show you how I locked this bushing to the housing. And what I did is use two 10.5 or 10 by 1.5 millimeter set screws. Now you could key these and me and the, me and the customer talked about it. He's a mechanical engineer himself. And we decided that this is probably the most cost effective and gonna be more than adequate to hold these bushings into the housings. Because they're thin, quarter inch thick, if you keyed that, you're not gonna be left with much. You wouldn't have to key it all the way across, but you know, the setup time, the thinning of the material, it was easier just to drill three quarters of the way through, use a bottoming tap, sink in a set screw with red Loctite. There's no risk of anybody screwing that all the way through into the rotating bit in here because it's not drilled all the way through. And if you shear these two set screws, you've got bigger problems than the way that these bushings are attached to the housing. So that's the reasoning behind, and they're offset, see, not centered, because there's a grease channel that runs down through here, and I wanted to miss that, so I didn't obstruct that channel. So, so that's the idea. Now, let me show you how I did it, how I do it, because I haven't done this one yet. Uh, these are a bit hard to hold. They're just torch cut, rough, weld spatter all over them, and uh, it's kind of a, you know, janky setup, but it works. It did work. So let's get this one done and get this project off the books. So that is directly across that circle. Obviously, most of you know that's your circle finder or your center finder. So I just line that up with the mark that I got there that's in line with my set screw. And I can transfer that all the way across the bushing or the circle. And then when I get set up, I can just use, in this case, I'll just use a plumb bob to run from this line to that line. That way I know I'm drilling straight down through the center of this bushing and I'm not off to the side when I'm drilling. You get the idea, hopefully. You'll see anyway. So I'm getting set up over here in the drill press to drill or hole for a set screw. And then I'll drill one, I'll flip it and drill the other. Now I've already made a mark directly 180 degrees from each other, directly across the center of this bore. Because when I drill this, I want to drill, you know, straight down through the, through the core of this thing. Now there's a few ways that you could get this set up. And I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna use or what I could use. So what we could do, just old tried and true, trusty old plumb bob. Line up your marks. Make sure that, you know, the line is crossing both marks. And then, you know, because of gravity, you're straight up and down. That's close enough for, for most stuff. Or if you wanted to maybe be slightly more accurate, get you a good accurate level, nice piece of flat stock, line up your marks and move your work until the bubble level's right. Then you're straight. Or you could take you a really nice straight edge, clamp it to your work, put you a test indicator in the quill, sweep along that edge and adjust your part that way if you needed to get it super accurate. But you get the idea. I'm gonna be using a level because for what I'm doing, that's good enough. And it is good enough. So my straight edge is 
clamped directly across my lines, got my level to that. Got a screw jack over here. Got a couple pieces of eighth inch aluminum in my vice jaws so I don't damage the jaws on this rough, rough surface. And I'm just adjusting this screw jack over here to fine tune in that level. And then I'll scoot this whole unit underneath the drill and we'll punch our hole in there. So I'm all set up here. Uh, we got a letter, Q, a letter Q drill in here, Q or 8.5 for the 10 by 1.5 that we're going to be uh, that we're going to be using. So all set up here, and I'm not drilling a pilot hole simply because we're drilling into brass or bronze, and it's usually not a good idea because the drill wants to just thread into the material, and it's best just to you know if you're going to use a regular drill that is ground for steel for brass or bronze. Don't do a pilot hole. Yeah, that's uh, or uh, put a little negative, you know, knock the sharpness off the bit. Oh, better turn on my phase converter. So I'm lightening up a lot on my drill pressure as soon as I get into that brass. That way it doesn't start digging and pull this thing out of the vise. Slow and easy. There's that one. I flip it, drill the other one. We'll take it over to the bench and we'll tap these holes. Just throw those on the ground. That's fine. So Cleveland number five is the tap wrench that I'm using. Starting off with an eight by or a ten by one point five plug tap, and we'll go to a bottoming tap just to get the threads all the way down. I'm just gonna get it going by hand. This tap's got a really good taper to it. It just helps to get them started straight. bottoming tap. So if you can get your hands on some of these old uh, little booklets that machine companies used to hand out uh, when you'd buy their products, now this is just general you know, drilling, tapping, reaming, really nice. Now most of this stuff is covered in the machinist handbook, but sometimes it's nice just to have a, a dedicated book that covers the topic that you're into at the moment. This is for drills and taps, and it covers what holes to drill, what size holes for what type of thread engagement that you want, special purpose taps, you know, tap uses, and just 
all sorts of recommendations. Very, very nice little booklets. I've got several of these, and I, I'm always, I seem to always be digging through them for something. But we started out with this tap here, which has a heavy taper on it. Got us centered in the hole good. You know, pretty easy to run in by hand and get the thread started. But it leaves us with a hole. I don't know if you, how well you can see that. Leaves us with a hole that is probably only 50% threaded to the bottom anyway because with such a heavy taper on it. So now we're going to this tap here, which is the same thread pitch as the tap that we just used, except for it has much less taper on it. And will give us pretty much threads to the bottom of the hole, minus, minus a couple threads there. So that's why we're you know, tapping it twice. Once to get going, you know, easy to get the hole started and good and straight, and then the second tap to get us to the bottom, thre good threads to the bottom of the hole. A little bit of the coil on there just seems to make such a huge difference just by using the slightest amount of lubricant on the tap. Sometimes some materials you don't want to use them, like cast iron maybe, but for basically anything else, you know, a little bit of lubricant doesn't hurt nothing. So this is just finishing off our threads as close to the bottom as we can get it. So I don't want these set screws to be proud, but I don't have set screws that are of the exact length that I need. So I'm just gonna screw this down there to its tight, measure from the top of it to the surface, and then take, it over, take these over to the mini lathe and just buzz the ends of them off. So we'll pull off 150 thousandths off both, and that should get us down to the, to the surface. I could just hit these with the grinder, or the grinding wheel, but then they'll just fly out of my hand and I'll lose them. Trust me, I've done that I don't know how many times. A little bit of the never come out juice.
There we go. I gotta stick that grease fitting in there. And this is done. So this is my granddaughter. This is Delilah. Look how sweet she is. She's almost three months now. Get you go go. You papa's good. So get your dirty hands in my face. <laughs> <laughs> She's so sweet. What a what a great little baby. She's always really happy and just a good baby, isn't she? Mm -hmm. Adorable. Yeah. See, we're going shopping. No, oh, where are you going? Where are we going? You going shopping? Yeah. You go town? So that was a pretty straightforward project, and like I believe I mentioned, it does not matter which way this bushing is pressed in here. Because of that grease channel that runs around the outside of this bushing and this four holes in there, when you pump grease in there, it should follow that channel and come out each hole. It should track down the cuts, the relief grease, grease screws in this bushing, and come out on the thrust face. I believe the issue that the guy was having with uh, the one not taking grease is for one, there wasn't a hole directly underneath the fitting, and for two, the channel that holds grease was full of grease that had turned rock solid, basically. So now that these have been pressed out, they've clean, been cleaned all up, they've just been squared up into the housings, and they've been locked in, there should be no reason why these shouldn't work directly or exactly the way that they were intended. So I'm happy with the way that it turned out. I was glad to get my son you know, and his help doing this. So I'm just going to spray a little paint on these where I had to weld my brackets just to, so they don't rust and maybe it looks a little, little bit better. And that is it. I'm glad to be done with this. Can I interest you in some shop-made soup? <sighs> smells just like burnt plastic. So this is a rubberized coating designed to protect uh, Cutting edges is what it's designed for. It's a tool dip is what it is. It's not soup. It's just a rubberized coating that peels off very easily and keeps your cutting edges from getting beat all to pieces. You know, when you've, you've got a whole bunch of reamers or a whole bunch of cutters and you put them in a drawer, you know what I'm talking about. You know, this stuff just goes on there. Sometimes you'll buy tools brand new and they'll come already with this stuff on them. Now I have used paraffin wax in the past and it does work but it makes a mess in your toolbox and it's hard to get off, off of the cutters. Not hard, but not near as easy as this stuff when you go to use the tool. So this stuff is awesome, it really is. This is just a pot, looks like a pot used for deep frying is what it looks like. So I'm happy with that. This was brought to me to use by a viewer and I appreciate it. I, you know, got a bunch of cutters that need some protection. Probably putting these on a stick or something across through there. You know, be the best way. The wheel cutters, anyway. So this is my neighbor Steve. He lives down the road. It's two Steves. We're making a coupler for uh, what is it? Blacktop roller. Blacktop so roller. It's a hydraulic motor that makes it vibrate. Yeah. So we're Parts no longer available. He called the dealer. He can't get it. It may be a universal part, but we're not 100% for sure. So we're just trying our hand at making one. It was plastic originally. We're uh, making one out of aluminum just to get him by for now until we can see if we can find you know, the right part. Yeah, those numbers are small on the dial. It's not bulldozer work, no. It's okay. Yeah, clump down. It's okay. Keep going.
Yeah, power down feed. Right. Yeah, but it's, yeah, yeah, they make them. I, th I think they make them where they'll stop at a certain point, you know, automatic stop. Right. I know they make them to where they feed down per stroke automatically. I don't know if they s will stop at a set number. You know what I mean? I've never owned one, so. Yeah. Yes. So you have a lot more fine control over this machine than what you'd think for it being so big. Oh, yeah. I was uh, pretty amazed what it takes to set it up. Yeah, a lot of time. But you know, if you was doing multiple of these, you'd just pop this one out, pop a new one in, and boom, you, you make another one. You know, just run through this process again. The time consuming is the setup. The original it's setup. Really what you call custom work. Yeah. How old? Uh, this is from this one's from the fifties. I think it's like nineteen fifty six, I think. This was one of the they didn't make shapers much longer than the fifties. They were just outdated, you know. Yeah. They milling machines and stuff were far more common. You know, so and that's what took the place of this? Yeah, kind of. This will do things that a milling machine won't do, like this job, right. internal splines. That's what this machine is good at, stuff like that. You can get a broaching head for a milling machine, but, you know, this thing's made for this kind of stuff. So what would do this today if we weren't using this? Mm, they would bro they broach. broach they would just be yeah, they would just be one tool. They'd push it through, and you know it'd be a shaped cutter. They'd just push it through with a press, most likely. Steel, you just have to go slower, you know. Slower. Yeah, you wouldn't take quite as big a cuts. It depends, you know. With the this is a small tool. Yeah, this is a small tool, small bar, you know. It's not not a real stout setup. It's easy to get distracted. It's easy to do, honey. Yeah, you got to keep up with a lot. Push it right out of the chuck, and we'd be stuck. So my neighbor Steve, he owns and operates heavy equipment, and unfortunately, I did not get a finished photo of this part. But it did work. It is installed in his uh, compactors, probably better known to most people as a steam, small steamroller, and uh, probably doesn't have any steam. But you get the idea. It's a compactor. It's a roller, and this. A hydraulic motor was coupled through this part that we're making into the actual vibrating portion of the 
piece of equipment and as of right now it's you know doing its thing and operating uh, knowing Steve he'll probably be in there until something catastrophic happens and it stops working I'm sure this is the first time he's ever uh, ran a shaper but he done really good I mean, he, he took to it took to it real well we had a lot of fun he just kind of messing yep. around making this part there's a pretty good chance that you'll see Steve on the channel more last one. You know, in the future. So We've got some projects and stuff that we want to work on. And, uh, and before I think we take this content. out, we want to test fit it. If we need to take any, if we need to open it up more, we can do oh, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you're just going to... Uh, I'm going to back the head up. Back the head up and then I can stick that motor on it. Uh, well, I may have to move it over and recenter. I don't know if I can get this out of the way. All right, guys, that's it this week. Glad to get those bronze bushings finished, just pressed out, cleaned up, pressed back in, secured to the housing. A uh, customer wanted to make sure that when they run this thing that they're not going to have any issues because it was kind of an unknown. The customer had not ran uh, this ball mill that these big uh, bronze bushes go on, so he wanted me to just have a look at them, lock them down, and I think that they're going to be just fine. So appreciate my son helping me as well. He's not someone who loves to be on camera and I appreciate him coming out here and working with me. Also you got to see my grandbaby for the very first time and uh, you'll see her more in the future but she is just not quite ready for full-time shop work. We'll get her there I, I assure you that but at the moment you know she's still still a little bit small. Uh, you know, you've seen the job at the end of the video where me and my neighbor Steve were working on the coupler. That turned out good. Like I say, he's using that. Uh, want to say a huge thanks to John Ransdale for the two boxes. Got them sorted and, and lined up. That's going to free up me a lot of space. He's a local viewer who you know, knew that I did not have the, mad, the set of boxes. And he had picked up to, uh, two at an estate sale. He had already had some himself, so he brought them to me, and I appreciate it very, very much. So thank you, John. And that is it for this week. So thanks for watching. Viewers, pat patrons, subscribers, anyone who's helped me out whatsoever, it is much appreciated. So that is it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.